Hi boys and girls, Mrs. Blackburn here. Have you ever wanted something so badly and you were told that you absolutely couldn't have it? And then when you finally did get that one thing, that it could change the course of your life forever. Well, we're going to read a book today by, it's a Fountas and Pinnell and Heinemann book. It was written by William Miller, illustrated by Gregory Christie. It's called Richard Wright in the Library Card. This biography is about a great African-American writer. When he was a teenager, he hungered for something that might seem very simple to you, but he couldn't get it because of his race. So he took some really big risks. So we're going to find out what kind of risks he took and why he took those risks. Richard loved the sound of words. He loved the stories his mother told about the farm where she grew up. There was a willow tree by a bend in the river, she explained. I dreamed all my girl dreams down there. Richard loved to hear his grandfather tell about the war, how he ran away with his master and fought the rebel army. I was only a boy, his grandfather said proudly, but I fought as well as any man. I fought in the rain and the mud. I carried the flag at the head of the troops. Richard longed to read stories on his own, but his family was very poor. They moved often, looking for work in different towns and cities. His father cleaned office buildings, his mother cooked in the kitchens of wealthy white people. Richard had little chance to go to school. His mother taught him when she could, reading the funny papers out loud, sounding each word carefully. When Richard finally learned to read, he couldn't buy or borrow the books he wanted so badly. Books were expensive. The doors of the library were shut against him because he was black. So Richard read whatever he could find. Old newspapers, books without covers pulled from ash cans. When Richard was 17, he caught a bus to Memphis. He hoped to find work, earn enough money to move to Chicago where he could make a new life for himself in the North. Richard walked the hot streets looking for a job that would be his ticket to freedom. He saw many young men like himself searching for the same job, the same way out. He finally found a place in an optician's office. He polished eyeglasses, swept the floors, and ran errands for the white men. As long as he kept his head down, as long as he began every sentence with Sir, Richard was safe. So to be safe, Richard had to begin every sentence with Sir at his job. Let's talk about that for just a minute. What dangers did Richard need to worry about? So what would happen if he didn't say, sir? Possibly lose his job, get fired, maybe even be beaten. At night, Richard returned to the boarding house where he had rented a home. To save money, he ate beans from the can warmed by water from the tap. Listening to the noise of the street below his window, Richard felt a familiar hunger for words. There were thousands of books in the public library, but only white people could get a card, could take them out. But Richard had an idea. At work, he looked around the office trying to find one man who might understand his hunger for books.
So Richard's hungry for books. Why might that be? What do you think books would do for him? He really couldn't have them. You couldn't read. You couldn't find any information. You have to remember, there's no internet, no electricity, no television. What would books do for him? For the most part, they were like so many white men he had known before. They would never understand a black boy who wanted a library card, a black boy who wanted to read books even they didn't read. Only one man seemed different from the others. Jim Falk helped, kept to himself, and the other men ignored him, as they ignored Richard. Several times, Richard had been sent to the library to check out books for him. One day, when the other men were out to lunch and Jim was eating alone at his desk, Richard approached him. I need your help, Richard said. Are you in some kind of trouble, Jim asked, with a suspicious look. I want to read books. I want to use the library, but I can't get a card, Richard said, hoping Jim would not laugh in his face. What do you want to read, Jim asked cautiously. Novels? Plays? History? Richard felt confused. His mind was racing so fast. He couldn't think of a single book. Jim said nothing, but reached into his desk and brought up a worn white card. He handed it to Richard. How will you use it, Jim asked. I'll write a note, Richard said, like the ones you wrote when I got books for you. All right, Jim said nervously, but don't tell anyone else. I don't want to get into trouble. No, sir, Richard promised. I'll be careful. In what way do you think Richard needed to be careful? What could happen to get Jim in trouble? After work, Richard walked through the crowded streets to the library. He felt as if he were on a train to Chicago, as if he were traveling north already. But when Richard walked through the door, he felt the old fear again. Many heads were raised at the sight of a black boy in the library. Richard kept his eyes down, not looking up until he stood before the checkout desk. The librarian put on her glasses to make sure she wasn't seeing things. Richard handed her the note he had written and stepped back. Why can't Mr. Falk get his own books? She asked sharply. He's very busy, Richard replied, his legs trembling. All right, the woman said but you tell Mr. Falk I'd rather see him in person next time. Richard roamed the stacks, unable to believe there were this many books in the world. He touched the leather spines and fingered the pages as he dreamed about for such a long time. The author wrote that Richard felt as if he were traveling north already. What does this mean? In the north, why was it, why would he feel more freedom in the north at this time? What was it like if you were a black man in the north during this time? And what does the library card represent to him? Some kind of freedom? Are you sure these books aren't for you? The librarian asked in a loud voice when he went back, went to check them out. Once again, heads turned and Richard felt the eyes of white people on him. He thought he'd been caught, that he would never be able to read the books he wanted so badly. But Richard told the lady what she wanted to hear, what she believed was true about all black boys like him. No, ma'am, he said, these books aren't for me. Heck, I can't even read. The librarian laughed out loud and stamped his books. Richard heard other people laugh as he walked out the door. What word describes the people in the library? Would you have done that? Done what Richard did?
Would you have pretended to not cause a problem? Would you have taken a risk like you did just so you could get? He's actually being very brave. That night in his room, Richard read until the sun dimmed the electric light. He read the words of Dickens, Tolstoy, and Stephen Crane. He read about people who'd suffered as he had, even though their skin was white. They longed for the same freedom Richard had spent his life trying to find. With the light of the sun coming through the window, Richard put down the book. He felt sleepy, but the words he had read echoed in his ears, colored everything he saw. He wondered if he would act differently, if others would see how the books had changed him. Richard knew he would never be the same again. That morning, he carried his books to work in a newspaper. Whenever he had a chance, whenever the office was empty for a moment, he read. Mr. Falk walked over, pretending that he was asking Richard to go and pick up his laundry for him. What'd you get, he asked, under his breath. Richard opened the newspaper and showed him. Jim seemed shocked at first, but then a smile came over his face. Those are powerful books, Richard, he said. Those books will stay with you for the rest of your life. But for now, he said, looking around the office. You should keep them to yourself. Richard tried to do just that, but as the time for the journey north came closer, he didn't care who saw him reading. The men in the office either laughed at him or asked him if he was crazy. What's a colored boy like you toting a bag full of books around for? Your head can't hold all them big words. Every now and then, Jim smiled at him from across the room. The library books had changed some of Richard's feelings about white people. Richard still feared them, but he understood them better. The day he left for Chicago, Richard stopped by Mr. Falk's desk. Thank you, Richard said. Thank you for the books. Thank you for everything. Jim didn't say a word, but he shook Richard's hand in front of everybody. Jim describes the book as powerful. What makes a book powerful? If you were thinking that it's knowledge, the book gives you knowledge, you're correct. The more you know, the more powerful you are. On the train going north, flying across the open fields, Richard remembered the books he had read. The words came back to him, the stories more real than the train itself. Every page was a ticket to freedom, to the place where he would always be free. And that's the end of that story. So, why were stories like A Ticket to Freedom for Richard Wright, What Can Knowledge Give People? What can knowledge give people? And we did just kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, knowledge can give people power. The more you know, the, it, it, it is a, a, a power for people, definitely a knowledge. What characteristics did Richard have that made it more likely that he would succeed? He said he understood white people more. He understood where they came from. If you can relate and connect to people more, you're more um, willing to understand why people act the way they do, why people um, have the reactions that they do. Um, but you're more um, able to go farther in life. And so uh, that's definitely a message the author was trying to get to know, um, get across that knowledge is definitely a freedom and not to allow obstacles to get in your way. If you can see the um, poster behind me, it says the biggest mistake you could ever make is being too afraid to make one. That is definitely something that I want my students to understand. Uh, it, if you aren't afraid to make a mistake, you're never going to learn anything. 
Um, mistakes are how we learn. I don't ever expect you to come into the virtual classroom or into the physical classroom and know everything. Uh, you have to make mistakes. I definitely make mistakes. I'm, I'm learning how to teach you virtually and um, all of the virtual teachers were learning how um, someone put it to me today. Uh, we're learning how to fly, but we're building the plane as we're doing it. So definitely making mistakes and we're learning as we go. So um, don't be afraid to make the mistakes because we will learn how to fly together. I hope you enjoyed the story, Richard Wright and the library card. And don't forget to pursue your, pursue your dreams. Thank you for listening.